The last point I want to talk about in this session are price promotions. Now, price promotions are a hugely important part of the marketing communication budget. So you see that in percent of the total communication budget, trade promotions account for about 40% and consumer promotions and media advertising about for 30% each. So promotions, especially the ones targeted to consumer, are of massive importance for companies and even more so in certain industries. In some categories like diapers or cereals or detergents, products are purchased nearly a third or over a third of the time only on promotions. So consumer promotions account for up to a quarter of the total communication budget and can represent up to 30% of sales in some product categories. Now, the question that you can ask is what do promotions bring to the table? And here there is a study that looks into the different effects of promotions. And you see that depending on the type of promotion, is it a premium, a sweepstake, a rebate, a coupon, consumers either defer purchases, so they buy later, for example, you don't buy chocolate in end of November because you may know it gets reduced just before Christmas in December. They may buy things they don't need. You may try out a new shampoo or a new type of cereal because it is 20% off. You buy more. You may buy five bottles of shampoo instead of two because they are discounted. You buy sooner. Usually when you buy more, you anticipate purchases and you may buy sooner. You may something that you have never tried or you may decide to switch to a different brand because one brand is cheaper than, than the other. So if you wanna define it, sales promotions are a mass communication technique. So in the 4P logic, they fall under the advertising under the promotion P. And sales promotion offer short-term incentive to encourage the purchase of a sale or a product. Promotions are always short-term, which means they need to come and go. If the price is reduced permanently by 20%, it's not a promotion. It's a permanent 20% price cut. They are very popular in plenty of industries, mostly because they have a direct link to sale. When you do a product on promotion, you can very often immediately observe that sales go up, which is a much more direct and short-term effect than, for example, investing into branding or in advertising. Especially in the world where people may not pay attention to advertising anymore, a sales promotion is something that you can do at the point of sales. So in the moment where you pick your shampoo, you stand in front of the shelf, you see that one is 20% off, you may decide to go with this brand. Unfortunately, and we come back to this point at the end of this session again, promotions also make customers much more prone to deals. They increase competition because they can very easily be copied. We talk about this again next session when we talk about price wars, and they train customers of always looking for promotion and probably adapting their purchase cycles accordingly, as we saw on the previous slide. They can very easily be copied, they can lead to price force. And one thing that we cannot forget is that they technically erode brand value. In many cases, when you want to measure brand value, what you measure is the price premium that a branded version can charge over a non-branded version. Well, if the branded version continuously runs promotions of 10 or 20%, this price premium compared over the non-branded version gets considerably lower, which means brand value has been destroyed. Nevertheless, they come in a lot of different formats. So here you see some example of price discounts, of bonus packs, of displays and attention grabbers. You see example of cashback offers and sweepstakes. So there are lots of different cases of promotions and consumers love them. If you have some time, go on YouTube, click on the link and watch one of the episodes of Extreme Couponing, which is a series that is only focused on people liking to work with promotions. Now, one question that we could ask is why do consumers actually like promotions? And of course, there are some utilitarian advantages. There are savings. A promotion is a price cut, which means you either get the same quantity for cheaper or you can buy a higher quantity. Instead of leveraging the price cut, you may get a higher quality item. Probably an item is on promotion that you usually would not buy or cannot afford, but now that is on promotion, you can buy and you can afford it. And in a certain way, it is also simply convenient. Instead of thinking very long about which type of product you buy, especially if you want to buy a high involvement item like a laptop or a phone, just take the one that is on promotion and probably be sure you made a good deal. These three aspects, saving, quality, and convenience are called utilitarian advantages because they bring an actual tangible benefit. 
But in many cases, these utilitarian advantages cannot really explain why people like promotion so much. Why does it make such a big difference for people whether they pay 20 cents more or less on a pack of shampoo? In the big scheme of things, 20 cents shouldn't matter much. And this is why many promotions also bring you emotional benefits. Value expression. They may allow you to position yourself as a smart shopper. When you come home from a shopping trip, you can be proud about the bargains that you found. They may allow you to explore new things. You may look for sales promotions to find new ideas that you want to buy. And in some cases, depending on how they are designed, they may simply be fun. So they have a whole series of advantages that are both utilitarian and hedonic. However, they are not without problems, as I've mentioned before. Frequent price promotions hurt brands because they train customers to delay purchases, and we have seen empirical evidence on that some slides earlier, and to adapt their behavior. And they train buyers to purchase more on special deals, which makes them probably generally value conscious and less brand loyal. But on the other hand, they help you to get visibility in the store, and they can increase consumers' attention, as we have discussed before. But this means you need to be really, really clear how you run promotional strategy, especially when you have a brand. When you have a brand, you need to be sure in which channel, at which time you run which promotion in order to balance out the positive and negative effect. Now, in some cases, especially when you are a retail outlet, you may decide that promotion is not for you. And instead, you may do something that is called everyday low price. Everyday low price applies to retailers, and the classical example of this is Walmart. And everyday low price says that there are no promotions. It's a strategy of continuously offering low prices rather than promotions, which means prices are occasionally high and occasionally low. If you imagine the price curve, if the normal price of the product is here and the promotion price of the product is here, usually for everyday low price, you are somehow in the middle. You won't be as low as the price that is a usual promotion price because this is not a sustainable business model. But of course, you will be a little bit lower than the normal price. So EDLP prices are usually situated between the regular prices and the deep discount prices, which means in order for EDLP to work, you will need to reduce prices on average. Depending on the type of store, if you move from a promotional strategy to an EDLP strategy, you probably need to lower all your prices by 10 or 20%. Everything else being equal, this leads to lower margins and lower profits. So this means a switch to EDLP can only work if price elasticity is sufficiently large. So if the decrease in price leads to a larger increase in volume, and we talk about the conditions for this in the next session, or if it can help you to get some kind of cost savings. And I'll talk about this in a minute. However, since consumers like promotions so much, many EDLP retailers still run some promotions. So there are very few who follow a pure EDLP strategy. And the one who is probably closest to it is Walmart, who positions a lot in their advertising, both for hedonic and utilitarian advantages. And you can go on YouTube and watch one of the older Walmart advertising spots that made these points very clearly. Now, if you compare EDLP and sales promotion, EDLP hopefully, and that's the idea, builds loyalty because it guarantees continuously low prices to consumers. This is the advertising strategy of Walmart when they say, if you always shop with us, we promise you that at the end of the year, you will probably have saved two or $3,000 compared to the high and low pricing of our competitors. And a key advantage that they have is they improve supply chain efficiency because they stable out demand. When you run promotions, when prices are low, many people will buy the product, and when prices are high, less people will buy the product. So when prices are always constant, you have fewer stockouts and you have higher inventory turns. There's also no real risk of price wars in EDLP. We talk about that also in the next session. And it reduces labor costs because you don't need people who constantly manage the promotions and set up reduction signs and remove them again. On the other hand, when you run sales promotions, you can do price discrimination and market segmentation for certain types of people. For example, when they are personalized coupons, may get a different price than others. And as mentioned before, they create excitement. They create flexibility to moving your merchandise. If after Christmas, you still have Christmas cookies left, you can heavily discount them in January just to get rid of them. And they are much easier to implement because sales promotions do not require a long-term strategic change, 
just as EDLP. And this brings us to the end of session seven. Next week in session eight, we talk about a list of constraints that you have as a company when you do pricing. Cost and competitive environment. We will talk about aspects like price war and channel pricing. So see you again next week.